Hi there, this is Steven Gonzalez with Steven Gonzalez VoiceOvers. How are you doing today? Okay, we've installed Reaper, we've installed the SWS extension for Reaper, and we've installed those four enhancement programs. And now it's time to run Reaper for the very first time. And that's what's next on Reaper for Voice Talent. In this video, we're going to be tackling quite a number of topics, starting with the Reaper profile itself. It's basically the brains of Reaper, and when we get there, I'll explain a little further. Then we're going to be looking at connecting and configuring the interface to use Reaper. Then we're going to be looking at the Repack acknowledgement and synchronization processes. And then we're finally going to be looking at the Cacos 3 tier licensing system. Remember that Cacos is the firm that puts out Reaper in the first place. And again, they have three tiers to their licensing. And now let's talk about caveats. And this one is a huge one. Remember, I'm using Catalina, which is a Mac OS that has been built with security in mind. This is going to come into play in a big way in this video, and we'll get through it. Whenever I run Reaper for the very first time, there are going to be many, many things happening at once, both Reaper centric and Catalina centric. And again, we'll get through them together. If this is your first time within this video, especially if this is your first time within Reaper for Voice Talent, do me a favor and like this video, subscribe to the channel. Don't forget to hit that notification bell setting it to all so that whenever I upload a video or whatever, you'll get a notification. And be sure that you watch these videos all the way through. They are so dense with information that I don't want you to miss anything. And finally, if you have any comments or questions, of course, drop them in the comment section down below and I'll be sure to try to get to them as soon as I can. And with that, without further ado, let's get started. Here we have the Reaper profile. Believe it or not, we've actually been in the Reaper profile before because we actually generated it. Here we have the Reaper folder and the user plugins folder that we generated in the previous videos. And here are the dialibs that we installed. Now, Whenever I run Reaper for the first time, there is going to be a lot of activity in this particular column. You'll see what I'm talking about in just a second. What exactly is a Reaper profile, by the way? It's the brains of Reaper. Some people call it the heart of Reaper. It's where Reaper stores all its information about how to run things like themes and key maps and FX presets. And then there are things like project and track templates and etc. As Reaper needs something, it puts it into the Reaper folder here. And you'll see that whenever I run Reaper for the very first time. Speaking of which, I'm going to be running Reaper just a second, but I want to thank somebody from the Reaper voiceover user group named Joseph McGuire, who showed me an alternative to the way that I was doing things with Catalina to begin with. I used to go into terminal and run a couple of XATTR commands to make sure that these dialibs in the profile would be accepted by Catalina but not everybody is comfortable with going into terminal. So there is a GUI way to do this. It's just a little bit more of a hoop to go through. For example, instead of once, we're going to have to run Reaper twice for Catalina to accept these dialibs, but we're going to do it that way. Let's talk about running for the first time. When I do this, there is going to be a splash screen here and a lot of activity in the Reaper profile. So here we go in a three, two, one, going. Okay, now Catalina is going to say, whoa, this came from the internet. You sure you want to open it? And of course we do. And here is the splash screen. And notice what's happening in the profile now. Lots of things are being generated. And here we go. This is what I was talking about. This is, I call this the Catalina window. Both dialibs are going to pop up in this type of window. In order for us to tell Catalina that these dialibs are okay, we have to go into System Preferences. And then under System Preferences, we're going to go under Security and Privacy. And under Security and Privacy, you'll see that there is nothing here for now. Well, there will be as soon as I hit this Cancel button. When I do that, you'll see, whoa, the SWS extension dialib was blocked. Well, we're going to allow it anyway. And now on further runs of Reaper, the SWS extension will be run. Same thing with Repack. We must hit cancel and then we allow anyway. And now both of those dialibs in future runs of Reaper will be running. So we get out of 
security and privacy. We get out of the applications finder and hit no for now for this select an audio device. And then we're going to get out of Reaper. We're going to go back into applications. And now we're going to run Reaper a second time. This time, Catalina is going to go, wait a moment. You said you wanted to approve these dialibs. Are you sure you still want to open it? And you say, yes, open to that one. Yes, open to this one. Reaper is ready to rock and roll. Let's go back one level here to our Reaper profile. Notice how it looks now. It's a lot different than just the user plugins. In fact, I love it that uh, Catalina is highlighting user plugins to showcase how much more is in there now. And you have color themes, which again is how it looks and feels within Reaper. Uh, you can actually make Reaper look like Pro Tools if you want, or Cubase or whatever. There are cursors, there are certain effects presets that you can put in there. You have Repack, which is what we're going to be tackling in just a few moments. You'll notice that there are a lot of .i and .i files. Well, Reaper started out being a Windows application, and this is actually the brains of Reaper right here, these .i and .i files. Then you have scripts, which are basically snippets of code that you can further massage Reaper to think the way you do. And it's really, really cool. And in the course, I'll show you how to script. And of course, user plugins, which we've already been before. Now, before we go any further, let's look at this notification here. It says, do you want to allow? That's up to you whether you want to allow it or not. I'm going to allow it. Now, this reaper.license.rk is going to come into play later. Okay, and then we're going to get out of Reaper's profile. And now we're here. The Reaper is basically saying, look, I don't know if you have an audio device, but if you do, what is it? So we're going to hit yes, and we're greeted with this window. This is the Reaper preferences window, which we're going to be getting into in a course work. But for now, let's just say that we want to record and turn in a project at 48K. Now, what exactly is 48K? Well, this is a sample rate. Sample rate is basically the number of times that the interface is going to take a look at the audio stream and measure out a couple of things and then send that information to Reaper. 48K means that it's doing this at 48,000 times a second. Now, there are three accepted sample rates. 48K is one of them. But then you have another one that's 441. And then finally, the last one is 96K. Now, the general rule of thumb is this. Whatever you turn in, the sample rate needs to be less than or equal to the recording sample rate. If you try to add samples to a recording where there are none, you're going to be asking for artifacts to be introduced into the audio stream that goes to Reaper and all this good stuff, and that's just not really good. Now, there are two schools of thought as far as sample rate and recording versus turning in. Some people say it's okay, regardless of what you're turning in, to record at 96, and then we can always downsample the audio that we're going to be turning in to our client per their request. There's some merit to that, and there's some not so good merit to that. It's up to you how you want to do this. Let's say that we want to do 48K. Well, we can't turn in something that's 96K sample rate, but if we're doing 44.1 as a final product, we can indeed record at 48K. And in fact, that's the second school of thought is whatever you turn in, you can go one step higher up to 96K. Now, the first school of thought says whatever you turn in, that's what you should record in. And that's what we're going to be espousing. And they're going to be at 48K. Now, block size. What exactly is block size? Essentially, this is the number of samples that the interface is going to take in before it shunts it to the computer. And you'll note that it's kind of a weird number, 512. Why is that not 500, for example? Well, we're dealing with powers of two because we are dealing with a computer now. And the computer only knows zeros and ones in what we call the binary numerical system. And so we want powers of two that are as close to the number that we want as possible. And in our case, we're going to change this 512 to 1024, which is roughly a thousand. This seems, after a bunch of experimentation, to be the best, most fluent block size for voiceovers. And so we hit apply, we hit OK, and we're done with configuring and connecting our interface. Now we're going to talk about repack. 
This is that acknowledgement window that I was talking about earlier. So we hit OK. And then we come up to extensions and we go to repack and we do synchronize packages. And basically what's happening is it's contacting all the repositories and saying, okay, what do you have so that I can make a list? And that basically is repack. Now let's talk about Caucasus three tier licensing system. Frankly, it's on the honor system. And as I showed you earlier, the first level is the demo. Now let's talk about the second level, which is the discounted level. To purchase a license for Reaper, we go to Reaper's website and we go to purchase. And here we are. You'll note that there are two paid levels. This is level two and three, the discounted license and the commercial license. It's up to you whether you want to be on the honor system or not. They lay out what you can be for the discounted license. And if you don't make that, then you're expected to pay the commercial license. Either way, you go into this website and you pay for it. And it's extremely important that you get this email address right because Kakos is going to send you a file called reaper-license.rk. And how do we implement it? Well, we go into Reaper, about Reaper, and then we go into purchase. And then we hit import license key. And we say import license key from file. And then we can hit allow. And we go into desktop. Allow again. And here's the .rk file. We hit open. And now you'll see that it says license type, personal small business use. If you notice in the title bar here, it says registered to Steven Gonzalez license for whatever. You can either hide your name or not. It's up to you. We hit close. And that is licensing our copy for Reaper. In the next video, we're going to be taking a look at the different parts of Reaper. And there's a link in the description below for the Maccentric playlist. If you have any comments or questions, please drop them in the comments section. And don't forget to hit like, don't forget to subscribe to this channel. And make sure that you hit that notification bell, setting it to all, so that you know whenever I go live, which, yes, that's going to be a thing, or upload another video. This is Steven Gonzalez with Steven Gonzalez VoiceOvers, wishing y'all all the best, and I'll see y'all in the next video.